Hi, Pete Moore, Gunmark TV, and welcome to another blast from the past. And I've sourced yet another rim fire. This is Remington's rather lovely 552 semi auto. Um, it was produced in 1957, and if you know your Remington guns, you can see the receiver is very much like their great 870 shotgun. Um, and they had a companion gun, or rather, uh, the, the companion gun was a pump action called the Remington 572 Fieldmaster. Um, and just it was exactly the same rifle. The only thing is that this is a semi auto and the pump was, say, a manual action. Um, I remember when I was a youngster reading My Brother's Guns and Ammo magazines and seeing the Remington adverts for these two together because they are just a sort of match pair. Um, and always wanting one because I just thought they were so elegant. I mean, they say they come from a time when guns were perhaps better made and less mass produced. Uh, and this is, sort of, to me, the quintessential American rimfire repeater. Um, you know, you, you want to the fields, you know, you're out there bashing rabbits to eating your crops and things, and you've got a handful of tutus and something like this rifle. And the other thing is, this design, well, both this and the pump action gun, are still current today. Though I'm not sure what Remington are doing because they've declared bankruptcy. Um, though I don't suppose that's going to make much difference to the actual firearms. Okay, let's look at the gun. Um, nicely made. Uh, 22 inch barrel on this which is quite long um, no need for that length but I think that's that's the way it was back then it runs a tube magazine which is a fixed magazine that fills from under there I'm doing a feature on the filling in this video so we won't pursue that now it takes 15 rounds of 2-2 long rifle but the nature of the magazine system allows you to also run the shorter 2-2 long and the even shorter 2-2 short cartridges. You could actually mix them up in the magazine, not that it would be any good, because the gun wouldn't be accurate enough. But um, there are times when you, you know, you're blatting rabbits, you want a, a less powerful cartridge that still does the business, and stuff like 2-2 short is, is great little calibre. But however, I have to say that for many years now, I haven't seen 2-2 short or 2-2 long, because uh, the, the, the classic long rifle in, in whatever format has taken over. Which is a pity I quite like short, but doesn't matter. But even in semi auto, this will feed it. Whereas a, a box magazine gun will, will only feed the caliber the magazine's designed for. So you couldn't put too, too short in a box mag gun, but you can stick it in this. It's a nice little feature. Um, gun is, you know, it's, it, it was in its day a top quality gun. This is a farm gun that's been around since 1976, I believe, and that was very kindly loaded to me. Um, but this is walnut stock. The action is aluminium, high strength, but it's, it's been nicely finished. Everything else is steel and blued, and when they come out of the box, these look look like a coat of new paint. They're brilliant. So, also like the 870 shotgun, it's got a cross bolt safety there. Nothing special, but that's what it is, and it works quite well. Um, on the semi-auto, it's a blowback, as all these guns are, and the cocking handle is here, on the left. Which, actually, it's tucked out of the way, when it reciprocates, it doesn't get in the way here. It's tucked out of the way, and you can easily, if you get stopped, you can e easily crack it open. Um, Remington went through a few different changes with the, uh, the 552. This is a second version gun um, because it's got this built in case deflector, which also blows a bit of the blast because the problem with semi autos, your head's up against the action, and all the unfired gas and blast comes out the side as the action unlocks its blowback you can cop it in the face or in the eye this thing deflects the brass you see when we're shooting it it really aggressively deflects the brass and to a greater degree the gases so it's nice for me but if you're a left hooker it's even better because nothing comes back to annoy you so you see, this is the second model um they both had very basic sights this is a, it's a slim blade with a brass tip up front and where the rear sight was, because we've got scope on this one, it was a pressed plate sight. Basically, it was a very simple buckhorn type or semi buckhorn with a ramp. So, uh, Remington then went into a sort of a third phase with this gun and they made the BDL, which is like best deluxe gun. And they did a couple of things. They fitted the aluminium sights of the 700 rifle with a big ramped blade up here and also a ramped U notch that gave you windage elevation as well as. Um, actual range 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 correction. Uh, then, for some unknown reason, they built the stocks with a raised comb just here, 
and it's probably the worst mistake they ever made because this has got quite a high comb anyway. And um, when you, and you, I always found it very hard to get onto the iron sights of, of, the, of the third version. And if you got a, and you had to mount your scope quite high, because you can see this is about right with low mounts. But if you had the comb up to, and you had to have the scope really high, um, it was a nice looking gun. It was checkered, and very much the, the classic Remington, but. It was just, you know, they didn't think it out. This is probably the best bet because doubtless you'll fit a scope and they have an integral like 11, 9 to 11 mil rail on there. Um, and I've got some this very old Edgar Brothers scope. It's a 6 by 44 fixed in sports match mounts, 30 mils. And it's good enough for a, for a rabbit roller. You can't complain. Um, so there's price-wise, I think the new guns, they're about seven to 800 quid. And I don't think most people would pay that much for that sort of gun when there's other, other semis about a lot cheaper. Um, but I've seen these at 80 quid, 90 quid, depending on the condition. Say so this gun is from 1976. It's been used basically as a farm gun. Okay, let's look, look at loading up the 5.52. Five, uh, so it's got a tube magazine, um, which is a little bit different, but it's just a magazine, that's all. But like all rim fire tube magazine guns, it loads from the front rather than the back like a modern lever action in 357. You unlock this rotary collar here and you can see there's a long brass tube, which is the magazine follower that also contains a spring. So you pull it out, you've got to pull it out until the actual follower, um, sorry, socket clears. So now you've got the loading port here and it takes 15 rounds. You hold the gun at a slight angle for obvious reasons, so it gravity does it down, you drop it in the slot, it goes down, that's one, two, three, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and that's it. And what you will see is the tip of the, the first round just protruding into that aperture. So then you push back down on the follower, you can hear the rounds clicking in. And then once it's fully home, you rotate it, and that is, the magazine is full, the chamber is empty. I think the real beauty of these um, tube magazine guns is that uh, they're not reliant on a separate uh, feed system, like a Ruger 1022 or similar, um, which is convenient. But the big thing about it is, in the old days, you just go out with a pocket full of rounds um, and shoot. I mean, you've got 15 rounds in this gun, and uh, it'll make it a good bunny basher. It shoots reasonably well. Um, so when you come out of, you know, when you're empty, you just load up, but you can top up at any time. If you've fired five rounds, you can stop, open up the magazine system, drop in five more and, and shut it back down. It's a, sort of, it's a design from another, another era, but it works very well. Okay, let's just watch it shoot. Um, nothing special here, but uh, we all like the guns going bang. So that's your safety catch there. That flips the fire, that's the safe. Cocking handle is rather neatly stowed away here, which I quite like. And it's on the left, so it suits right handers. And also, this case deflector and blast deflector is really nice, even for a right hander. Well, obviously, it's better for a left hander, but it's, it's a little feature that uh, I think is, is well considered. Okay, so safety's on, cycle it, ready to go, and just shoot some. That's it. We are clear. That's fun. I mean, I love tutus. I sometimes come up here once I finish working and bring my tutus up and have a couple of hours just bang around on targets, small little frangible targets and things. It keeps your eye and it's good fun. That's the main thing about it. But yeah, this is a classic sort of American bunny basher, that sort of thing. Um, you know, we won't see their like again because 2-2 rim, rim fires have moved on so much. And we've got some very high-tech guns out there, but this is a beautiful classic design. Um, and it's as simple as that. Okay, it's Pete Moore signing off. Um, hope you like the video. Um, if you do, share it, tell your mates, and just go to the website, gunmark.net, to see any more. And also, just to let you know, there is now a new um, email address for me because the old Aceville one is defunct. So in future, do not use pete.more at aceville.co.uk. That is now gone. It'll be pmore 
dot shooting sports at gmail.com so it's down there remember it and pass it on to your friends and good shooting it's summer coming you should have some fun Thank you.